It's a quarter to four here on today. My name is Cindy Mabi, standing in for Braden Muyane. Now, over 4,000 fraudulent and dishonest insurance claims were made in South Africa in the 2021-22 financial year. And these amounted to almost 800 million rand. And it's a significant increase of over 29% from the previous year. And now the country's largest insurer, Suntam, is joining forces with the South African Fraud Prevention Service to nip this practice in the but we are joined by the insurer's Jerry Chetty. Good afternoon to you, Jerry, and thank you so much for joining us. Just to clarify what kind of fraud uh, we are dealing with uh, and for you to explain the statistics. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Cindy, and good afternoon to your viewers. Yeah, so in South Africa, I just want to maybe just uh, set the scene. We have the long-term or the life insurers, and the stats you just cited there are stats from on the long term. It has been collated by CESA the Association for Savings and Investments. And then we talk about general or short-term insurance. And this relates to, to your to insurance for household, uh, your contents and your vehicle insurance. And that's, that's how the industry is set out. So when we look at these stats, CISA has, has very accurately been able to compile stats from the long-term side. However, there, there's been a shortcoming with the general insurance in terms of getting these stats together. But with that said, you know, international best research has, has positioned to say, uh, to say that insurance crime costs any industry uh, within the country globally between 10 to 15 percent of your either gross return premiums or the amount of claims that have been uh, paid out. In South Africa, we're using the the statistics around 10% of claims paid out uh, to say that there's always an element of dishonesty or fraudulent. And this is, equates to between three to five billion per annum in South Africa. All right, so now we're going to look at what this means, not only for the industry, but also the premiums for uh, your clients who are in good standing, for lack of a better phrase. The issue is perhaps it has to do with circumstances and we're not condoning any fraudulent behavior dishonesty ethics of course needs to be and principles needs to be above board but do you think that the circumstances sometimes would force people uh, into trying to cut corners and find an easy way out your view jerry yeah thank you for that so so cindy i think at the outset i want to stress that insurance fraud or insurance is a serious crime. So if you lie to your insurer by either inflating a claim to get a greater benefit, or you submit a false claim for an incident that didn't occur, you are committing a crime. So with that said, um, I just want to talk about the an important point you spoke around the ethicality of consumers. And you know, it, it, it seems to have become a accepted practice. And this this relates to the the concept of inflating claims. Uh, you know, I've done several research, and I think industry, there's been several research that, that points out that insurance crime has become an acceptable norm in society. So it's okay for people to stand around the bright fire and brag about how they inflated claims. Um, and this is supported by, the, by society. So society has a huge huge kind of impact in terms of curbing these types of, of crime when, when you look at the inflation of, of, of fraudulent claims to get a, a better kind of cash settlement or whatever settlement it is. And it is uh, spoken about anecdotally, or as you're saying, around the campfire or the bri uh, is, is the fact that it is a bloodless or seem to, to be perceived to be a bloodless crime. Uh, insurance companies themselves would have insurance uh, or contingencies to cover whatever shortfall. But uh, the bottom line is it is illegal. And what are the penalties if, if found uh, that you were dishonest or in, in your case, you can give us the stats of the number of cases that you um, came across? Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for that, Cindy. So I think let, let me start with the repercussions of this. I mean, firstly, you, you, you run the risk if you submit a false claim or you lie, uh, you run the risk of having the claim rejected. Your policy will then get terminated you then face the risk of criminal prosecution. And I think the last thing that I want to touch, uh, touch on is 
or uh, the issue of you being listed on the South African Fraud Prevention Services. So these have huge consequences. And I sometimes think that consumers do not understand the impact of these consequences because this could potentially lead that you have a criminal conviction for, for thinking about, uh, for not thinking your actions through and thinking that you can make a fast buck or gain something very quickly from the insurance company. Yeah, and I just want to go back to the profile so that we can uh, uh, really reflect and introspect as a society, look ourselves squarely in the eyes, in the mirror, saying that there is potential uh, complicity that we also perpetuate. If you're not going to question why a particular claim or there's all of a sudden new furniture, whatever it is in the household, you are also complicit to that crime. So how does society, how more vigilant uh, uh, can we be as consumers as well to, to just respect the law and order and the prescripts that are there? Yeah, uh, so I think, I think first and foremost, we must recognize that submitting a false claim or inflict is a crime. You know, we, we very quick to speak about these other kinds of, let's call it other, uh, like truck hijackings or whatever other crime that takes place, but submitting a false claim is a crime. The, the issue that, that, that we can do is about sensitizing society that they understand the impact of bad action that shows submitting these false claims. I mean, research done in, 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 in Germany indicates that people frowned upon the fact if you stole a bubble gum from a shop, yet they were happy to accept if you inflated or submitted a false claim. So this is a global problem. It is not only a South African problem. How do we do that? I mean, the only way that we can start to do that is, is to, to, to move away from this acceptability. And I think we as society has become very accepting of certain bad behavior, insurance crime being one of them. So we need to, we need to move around that. And without denying that the insurers also have a role to play in terms of, in terms of putting out there uh, and creating more awareness around what, what the harmful impacts of insurance crime is about. But also, you know, this, this narrative that um, it's okay to, to defraud a huge ins insurer is only, in my mind, a justification for your own bad behavior. I think the risk is and the concern that we are seeing is that there seems to be more support for this. And this is where we need to start to change that narrative. All right, Jerry, we're going to uh, have to leave it there. But thank you indeed for joining us. Now, that's uh, Jerry Chetty from Santam uh, uh, talking to us about the fraud prevention services that they collaborated with in order to curb insurance fraud.